so for most of us, the healthcare landscape has changed quite a bit these past few months. My first aid kit has always been set up for burns and severed fingers because normally an ambulance is only a few minutes away. But these days, in a lot of places, it could be a lot longer. And that's assuming you really want to be in an emergency room at all. So a lot of us are using remote medicine and consulting with doctors online. So we know if something is serious enough to need a visit right away, can wait until morning, or we just need to pick up a prescription. This means we need to be able to give our healthcare providers the best information we can. Fortunately, I've been looking at some tech that might help us do that. Now, as always, I'm an entertainer, not a healthcare provider. So don't go sticking a thermometer up your nose just because I said so. Today, we're talking about what different devices are relevant, but how and when to use them is best left to professionals. Links and citations are in the description box. But in the end, please follow the advice of your healthcare provider and don't try to self-treat or self-diagnose. One of the issues that has been cropping up during the recent crisis is something called silent hypoxia. As we all know, your lungs oxygenate your blood. When your blood doesn't get enough oxygen normally, you realize it pretty quickly because you feel like crap. This virus we're dealing with is super tricky because a lot of the time, people with hypoxia don't even realize it. The symptoms are silent. They feel okay. So by the time they made it to the hospital, they're pretty far along and in a bad way. So for people who are at risk or have other symptoms, some doctors are recommended they use something called a pulse oximeter to check their SpO2 levels. Most pulse oximeters look like this. They have a little light that shines through your skin and based on how much light your blood absorbs, it can see how much oxygen you have in your blood. Usually, if it goes below 94% or so, people are told to call their doctor. Does having okay SpO2 levels means you're okay and have nothing to worry about? Absolutely not. It's just a tool for your doctor to use, not you. Give them the number, let them decide if the data has value. It's like a thermometer, but for another metric. Some doctors are recommending people have a pulse oximeter at home, some aren't. They aren't very expensive, so I think given it's become such a common tool, I think it's reasonable to have one in the first aid kit just in case your doctor asks. But again, this isn't a metric you should interpret yourself unless told to. So I've been looking around at a few brands and most of the products are pretty straightforward. But I found some that I thought was a bit better than others while still being reasonable as far as cost goes. They are from a company called Wellu. This is not a sponsored review. I just asked them for review units and they were kind enough to oblige. Now, all of the products I'm looking at today have Bluetooth functionality, but I checked very carefully. You do not need to use your phone to set them up. They all work completely on their own which is important for privacy purpose. The most secure way to use any product that shows health metrics is to just take a picture of the red readout with your phone and send that over skill messenger to your healthcare provider. It's not elegant, but it's pretty secure. Your next option is to install the app. I have to go through a lot of companies before I could find one with an acceptable app. The one for these products needs two permissions. Location, which isn't used for location, it's used for access Bluetooth low energy, which happens to require location privileges and lo local access to safe files. That's it. The BLE location issue is an Android thing, not the app trying to snoop documentation on this in the description box. Unfortunately, there's no way the app can do its job with fewer permissions than that. But again, you don't need the app. 
just take a picture. There is also the option to set up an account. This lets you export data to your PC. Personally, I don't want anything health related in the cloud. So unless your healthcare provider asks for that, I don't see a reason to set that up. Bluetooth and local storage is a reasonable balance of convenience and privacy. What I have here is a basic clip on pulse oximeter. It's the OxySmart fingertip pulse oximeter. This gives us SpO2 and heart rate. Very simple to use, just as easy as a thermometer. This is the most common kind you'll find online. The problem with it is, if your doctor asks you to keep it on for a while, it's a real pain trying to hold something at the same time with that hand. Sometimes they might tell you to sleep with it on and it's just going to get pulled off by your blanket. You can use a bit of surgical tape, but it's just clumsy. So the same company has something I really like instead. Let me unbox it. It's called the Wellu O2 ring. This tiny little ring does the exact same thing and more, but it's much easier to keep on and doesn't interfere with you doing normal things. The battery lasts for 12 hours. It can lock and track your data for sleep apnea. It has a vibration alert if your blood oxygen levels drop too low. I really like this. It's a true wearable that actually offers some useful data other than wearable watches and rings don't. If you have a medical condition, you can wear it in public and it's not very noticeable. I downloaded their app, so let's take a look. So now it showed up, this is my O2 ring. Tap the key on the top of the device, this, okay. It's very responsive right away. All right, it shows week, month, year. So you store your data in it and you can check by week, month, or year. To monitor SPO2 and HR, please keep your device stays in range of your phone and your phone awaits. Now my SPO2 is 99% and my heart rate is 86 okay settings reminder so you can set when the spo2 uh which 88 percent uh it will uh alert you i told you there is a vibration uh, alert inside uh, let me see device vibration intensity medium okay it's on on my backup sign in so you can choose to sign in or not because once you connect to it it just bluetooth with it you don't want to sign with an account you can but i'm not going to do that you can see uh on the ring and on the app straightforward but remember you don't need to use the phone you can just use the ring totally offline okay now let's take a look at the other product Now, what I've really been waiting to show you, the Check Me Pro Dr. Vital Signs Monitor. It's pretty much the closest thing to a medical tricorder out there. It walks you through the whole process, like a sci-fi autodoc. It just makes sense that the more data we can give healthcare professionals who are working remotely, the more effectively they can treat us. And 
this device offers pretty much everything you can get outside of a clinical setting in a pocket size. Easy to use package. Now, I don't know what every single one to this matrix means, but let's walk through this and see if it's at least easy for me to use so a healthcare provider who does know what those metrics mean can get them for me. Okay, let's try the ECG recorder first. Touch electrodes gently. Okay, it says I have a regular ECG rhythm. Now let's try the pose oximeter. Insert finger in center and relax. Normal black oxygen. You see it shows SpO2 96%, which is normal. PRPI, I don't know what it means, but it's, it seems fine because it says normal. Now let's try the thermometer. Okay, keep sensor lens and port clean, periodically clean with alcohol swab, okay. Put sensor on temp, click button, then scan to forehead and tell me. Thirty-six point five uh, degrees Celsius. Okay, it looks like I am all good. This video is made possible by the generous support of JLC PCB, China's largest PCB manufacturer. With JLC, you can have your PCB manufactured in under twenty-four hours, all while you track the process in real time. Prototype boards start at just two dollars in any color. Check the description box for more info. One of the best ways to support me is to support the companies that fund this channel. Okay, I was reading the instruction and I've got it all figured out. Now let me show you how the blood pressure cuff works. So uh, you just press the on and off button and click NIBP on the device it will search it. it will show up and you just connect it you don't have to connect to your app star Please relieve valve to deflect the cuff. Okay, it's 99 over 61 normal range blood pressure. Next, I'm going to do ECG and pulse oximeter at the same time in the mini monitor mode. First, I'm going to put the device in this silicon uh, case. And the white splitter here.
Okay, now the Check Me Pro is showing my heart rate and my SpO2. If you want, you can actually use the app to monitor this. Let me show you. So their app is called My Beat Air. You go in and it will search the device nearby. Check Me 2915. And it's showing the same thing exactly on the Check Me poll. It's showing the ECG number and SpO2 97. It seems fine, it seems normal. Uh, the Check Me Pro has around 10 to 12 hours of the build memory. You can lock in the widows and all day while you are sleeping or when you are sick. And then the next day you can export the data to the PC and then you will see a fancy uh, graphics of all the all the data in details but I think for ordinary people you can just take a picture on the app or record a video and then send it to your doctors that's much easier okay now the Xiaomi is FDA approved so it's not some super dodgy gimmick it's well made and easy to use at about $500 it's not cheap but if you have access to remote healthcare it could easily save a life or at the very least save a trip to the hospital as far as target market my grandmother is in her late 60s and I don't think this would be too easy for her to use my mom and dad are in their 40s and while very healthy they could easily use this for emergencies so I'm going to give it to them at the very least, I think a pulse oximeter is a good addition to every first aid kit. But again, to emphasize, these are tools to give your doctor more information, not tools so that you can self-diagnose. Be smart, be scientific, and until next time, remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it.